the age of the lawful tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. How Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Now Mary, for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Now Mary, for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As precious men domine, he so poet mundabur, me fabis me suveniva de galubur. Miseneri me deus secundum magne misericordiam tuam. Gloria patri et filio, spiritui santo, sicut er ad principio et nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. As precious me domine, he so poet mundabur, me fabis me et suveniva de galubur. Ostende nobis domine misericordiam tuam. Et salutare tuum da nobis, Domine exaudi ratione mea, et clamo mea sante venia, Dominus obobiscum, et cum spirito tuo, orlebus. Exaudi nos Domine sante pater onipotenze etrene Deus, et mitere vinieri sanctum angelum de tuum de celis, qui custodi ad fovi ad protig ad visite et atque defenda ad omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo, E Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen.
Dio Deo, omnipotenti, beati Maria, sempre vigili, beato Michele, Arcangelo, beato Ioanni Battista, Santi Sepostoli, Spetio e Paolo, omnibus Sancti, Sentiti Pate, qui è Vicamini, Scogitazione, Verbo ed Opere. Meo culpa, meo culpa, meo massima culpa. E io prego e alta Maria, sempre vigili, beato Michele, Arcangelo, Beato Giovanni Battista, Santo Sepostolo Svetimo e Paolo, Omne Santo se te corte, orrare con me ad ogni un Deo nostro. Resaliato Vesini, Prudenza Deus, Sinti Mispecati Gesù, Ispeduta Gosi, Vita Metta Nam. Amen. Urgenziam su Sion, metto missione, metto dono, sono di due, non mi 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 sono di due, Etare Jerusalem et conventum facite, omnis qui dirigitis eam, gaudete, cum letizia, qui in tristizia fuistis, ut exultetis et saziemini a guberibus consolationis feste. Vetatus sum in his creditas hunt mici, in domum domini ibimus. Gloria, Patria, Filio, et Spiritus Santo, secularat in principio e nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Etare Jerusalem, et conventum facite, omnes qui dirigiti seam, gaudete com letizia, qui in tristizia fuistis, ut exultetis et saziemini a guberibus consolationis vestre. Kyrie eleison, 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 Kyrie eleison. Nominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo. Ordebus. Ancele paesmus onipotens Deus, ut qui ex merito nostri actionis affligimur, tue grazie e consolazione resperimus. Per dominum nostrum, Jesu Christo, un filio tuo, Qui te cum vive da regna ad un'unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordebus. A cum tis as caesmus d'avrementis e copris defende periculis, et intercedente beatre gloriose sempre vigile e regenetrice e Maria, cum beatu Iosef, beatis apostolis tuis Petru et Paolo, et que beatis Cusmani tui fidi et omnibus Sanctis, salutem nobis tribu e veninus e pacem. O distruxi sempre si e dolorimus universis, eclesia tua secure tibi servia divitate. Omnipotens e viterne Deus, qui vivorum dominari simul motuorum omniumque misedelis, quos tuos fili et opere futurus esi prenosis, te supplices es oramus, ut proquimus e fundere e pregi decrevimus, quos quem vel presi in seculum et hoc in cali retine, vel futurum iam supus copere suscepi, et ascendensibus omnibus sanctis tuis, ietatis tua clemencia omnium dilectorum suorum veniam consequantur. Per dominum nostri, in unitatis spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lex epistole viazzi paulio poste et galatas. Fratres, scriptum est, quoniam Abraham duos filius habuit, unum de ancida et unum de libera, Sed qui de ancida secundum carnem natus est, qui altum de libra per promissionem. Que sunt preda libori antica, e che in sunt duo testamenta, urum qui de memonte sina in servitutem generans, que est agar, sina elimons est in Arabia, que conjunctus est ei, que nunc et fio Jerusalem, et servit cum fili suis. Irautem que sursum est Jerusalem, libera est, que est mater nostra. Scriptum est enim, Le tarde, stelilis, quae non paris, eurumpi et clama, quae non paguris, quae a molti filii disete, magis quam eus, quae habet verum, nos autem fratres, secundum isa promissionis, 
filisus. Sed quomodo tunc is qui secundum carne natus fuerat, fuerat resequebatur eum qui secundum spiritum, id haret nunc. Sed qui dicit scriptura, dice ancinum et filium eus, non enim heres erit filius, ancile cum filio libere. Id hafe, fratres, non sumas ancile filie sed libere, que la libertate Christus nos liberam. Deo gracias. Letatus sub in quis predita sunt miti, in domum domini ibimus, qui et pax in vetute tua, et abundantia in turribus tuis, qui confidunt in domino sigo monsio, non come vebitur in eternum, qui a habitat in erlusterem, montes in cecui tu eius, et dominus in cecui tu populi sui, et som nunc et usque in seculum. Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sequentia sancti Evangelii, secundum Giovannem, Gloria a te, Dei Domine, in ino tempore abiet Iesus transmare Galilei, quod est Tiberiadis, et sequebatur e multitudum agnia, quia videvan signia, quia faciabat su pequis, qui infermabuntur. Subit ergo in montem Iesus, et ibi sedevat cum discipuli suis. Erat haut in proximum Pascha, dies festus in reorum, cum sollevassit ergo oculus Iesus, et vedissit quia multitudum maxima venit et eum, dissit ad Filipum, un die memus panes, um anducenti, mot haut in dicevat in transeum, in se riuscevat quid esit fratulus. Respondit ai Filipus, ducentorum denari orium panes non sufficio deis, ut unus quisque in modicum quid acipiat. Digit ai unus est discipulus seius, Andreas, frater Simonis Petri, est tua unus hic, che qui habet quinque panes, hod eceos, e duos fisces, sed equit sunt in inter tantos? Dixit ergo Iesus, facit ai homines discumere, erat haut in fedium multum in loco, discumerunt ergo viri numero quasi quinqui, quinque milia. Accepit ergo Iesus panes, et cum gratias agisit e distribuit e discumensibus, Similiter et ex piscibus quantum voleban, ut autem in plebis undis si discipuli suis. Oligite, quae subraverunt fragmenta, ne perrean. Olegerunt ergo et in pleverunt duodicem, quo finus fragmentorum ex quinque paribus hod eicis, qui superfluerunt his, qui maducaveran. Il iego homines convidisse il quod Iesus fecer et signum dicebant, qui a hic est veri profeta, qui venturus est immundum. Iesus ergo cum comiono visit, cui aventurit et essent ut raperent eum, et facerent eum regem, cui diterum in monte mipse solus. Laus, stimi Christi. On this Letare Sunday, the fourth Sunday in Lent, the epistle is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Galatians. Brethren, you will find it written there that Abraham had two sons. One had a slave for his mother and one a free woman. The child of the slave was born in the course of nature, the free woman's by the power of God's promise. All, this, all that is an allegory. The two women stand for the two dispensations. Agar stands for the old dispensation, which brings up his children to bondage, the dispensation which comes to us from Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai in Arabia has the same meaning in the allegory as Jerusalem, the Jerusalem which exists here and now, an enslaved city whose children are slaves. Whereas our mother is the heavenly Jerusalem, a city of freedom. So it is that we read, Rejoice, thou barren woman that has never born child, break out into song and cry aloud, Thou that hast never known travail, the deserted one has more children than she whose husband is with her. It is we, brethren, that are children of the promise, as Isaac was. Now as then, the son who was born in the course of nature persecutes the son whose birth is a spiritual birth. But what does our passage in Scripture say? Rid thyself of the slave and her son. It cannot be that the son of a slave should divide the inheritance with the son of a free woman. You see then, brethren, that we are sons of the free woman, not of the slave. 
such as the freedom Christ has won for us. And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of that according to St. John. At this time, Jesus retired across the Sea of Galilee, or Tiberias, and there was a great multitude following him. They had seen the miracles he performed over the sick. So Jesus went up onto the hillside, and there sat down with his disciples. It was nearly the time of the Jews' great feast, the Paschal feast. And now, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a great multitude had gathered round him, Jesus said to Philip, Whence are we to buy bread for these folk to eat? In saying this, he was putting him to the test. He himself knew well enough what he meant to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred silver pieces will not buy enough bread for them, even to give each a little. One of his disciples, it was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fishes, but what is that among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the men sit down. There was no lack of grass where they were, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. And Jesus took the loaves and gave thanks and distributed them to the company and a share of the fishes too, as much as they had a mind for. Then, when they had all had enough, he told his disciples, Gather up the broken pieces that are left over so that nothing may be wasted. And when they gathered them up, they filled twelve baskets with the broken pieces left over by those who had eaten. When they saw the miracle Jesus had done, these men began to say, Beyond doubt, this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Knowing then that they meant to come and carry him off so as to make a king of him, Jesus once again withdrew onto the hillside all alone. How merry for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to thee, Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast mass on this Mothering Sunday, Laetare Sunday, Dominica de Rosa, and various other names uh, that this day has. Indeed, one could uh, spend uh, a give a long sermon on just uh, the names and the customs and the traditions associated with today. But why is today uh, called Mothering Sunday? Why are we in a, uh, a lighter shade of uh, violet uh, today? otherwise known as Rose. Well, because uh, today the essential theme uh, of the Mass uh, is uh, speaking to us of our uh, Christian hope. Uh, that is to say that we are now just midway through Lent. We are, uh, Easter is approaching us, and Holy Mother Church is reminding us today of what our ultimate goal and destination in life is. Really, she's asking us to recall and to remember what the purpose of our lives here on earth are. And this lesson, of course, she is presenting to those catechumen who are uh, preparing themselves for baptism on Holy Saturday at the great Paschal Vigil. So it is that in our uh, Rome today, in our uh, pilgrimage, our spiritual pilgrimage around the Eternal City, the Basilica today that we visit is Santa Croce in Jerusalem. In uh, old times, it was simply known as Jerusalem, and it uh, is the uh, church that uh, houses the relic of the true cross that uh, Saint Helena, uh, mother of the Emperor Constantine, brought back from uh, uh, visit her uh, pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Uh, recall that uh, Saint Helena uh, rediscovered uh, various uh, of the holy sites that are still, of course. Uh, visited in great numbers today, although perhaps not right at this very minute uh, with the present contagion. Uh, St. Helena found uh, the True Cross and uh, brought back a portion of it to uh, Rome and uh, the house, the church, originally a house, a sort of palace actually, uh, that is now the church, uh, was simply known as Jerusalem. Uh, and as it were, uh, it meant that uh, the pilgrim people of Rome uh, could uh, 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 sense uh, a closeness um, to Jerusalem. But why is Jerusalem so important? Well, of course, those of you who are familiar, or if you have Jewish friends, if you're familiar with the Jewish faith, you will know how important Jerusalem was to the Jews, most especially because of the temple. Why? Uh, if you recall our Lenten series of lectures last year about uh, temple theology, uh, the temple was, of course, 
uh, God's dwelling place on earth. Uh, that's why the temple was so important. That's why Jerusalem was so important. Jerusalem, as it were, was a, uh, a, a, a presence uh, of uh, um, heaven uh, here on earth. It is where God resided, which is, and it is where primarily God was worshipped. And likewise then for us uh, as Christians, uh, so too is Jerusalem important for us. But as St Paul says in today's epistle, not the present Jerusalem, not the city in Israel, but rather the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, that spiritual home which is promised to God's chosen people. And we, of course, are made chosen by virtue of the New Testament. That is, uh, again, what St Paul is uh, referring to in the epistle. We are the new chosen people of God. And it is a heavenly Jerusalem to which we aspire, to which we desire. Today, of course, as well, was traditionally a day when uh, servants uh, were given time off uh, to go home and visit uh, their mothers. Or actually, properly speaking, to visit their mother church their parish church, the place where they were more often than not, rather than today, uh, baptised. It was also traditional for people to make pilgrimage to the mother church of the diocese. Likewise, uh, as it were, to... But why? <laughs> why? Why go to the parish church? Why go to the cathedral? Essentially because they now are churches and cathedrals are representations of the heavenly Jerusalem. These places are where God now dwells. No longer just one place in the world, but in all the tabernacles throughout the world. Hence, of course, the reference to heavenly manna and the feeding of the 5,000, which is, of course, an allegory to the Eucharist. in all our churches and cathedrals around the world, is a tabernacle wherein, wherein resides God, the dwelling place of God. Where does he reside but in the Eucharist, that new heavenly manna, that bread of angels, that which is the body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, who, God, who is God made man. So it is that every church and chapel and cathedral where the Blessed Sacrament is reserved is, as it were, uh, a Jerusalem, is for us Jerusalem. Now remember, of course, that our faith is an incarnational faith, meaning that for us it's all about the harmonious reunion and reconciliation between the spiritual and the material. It's not all about heaven is up there and we are down here. If anything, it's about heaven coming to us and becoming one with us. That was the mystery of the incarnation, God becoming one of us. But likewise, too, is that incarnational uh, aspect uh, permeated throughout our faith. Think of sacraments, think of sacramentals. What is the definition of a sacrament? but the outward and visible sign of an inward and invisible grace, wherein things that we can see are transformed, changed and imbued and given new significance and meaning, so that we see bread and we see wine, but they become for us the body, blood, soul and divinity of Christ. Their substance, in this case, essentially changes. Likewise, though, with baptism, we are um, reborn, through that uh, uh, fountain of life, that wellspring of um, uh, uh, eternal life that is Jesus, but through the physical aspect of water. And of course, we ourselves, who are essentially spirit, though encased within these mortal uh, vessels. We then, too, uh, are blessed. So when we are baptised, it is not just our souls that are being baptised, but also our bodies. This was... Uh, 
the point of our uh, part of one of the points of our catechism yesterday. That so many Christians don't realise that we are as blessed by virtue of our baptism, we are as consecrated and set apart for God by virtue of our baptism, as any chalice for the altar is consecrated, as uh, any building or church is consecrated uh, to the glory of God. We are made holy by virtue of our baptism. Remember the point of the Christian life, the whole point of life, full stop, is to become holy like God our Father is holy, so that we can become one with God, who is holy. That's why the Christian life is about the pursuit of holiness. It's about sanctification. And so it is then that our heavenly home, our heavenly Jerusalem, is presented for us, as it were, where God dwells. And God dwells in the tabernacle, in the Eucharist. Remember that the nature of liturgy itself, we are seeing, as it were, the worship of heaven. Indeed, with the holy sacrifice of the Mass, it is not I, it is not the priest, it is Christ, the High Priest, who offers himself at the altar. As it were, through uh, the imagery, through the the, the priest as a kind of uh, incarnational icon. It is Christ who offers himself on Calvary and before God's throne as a holy, spotless sacrifice and atonement for our sins, as the ultimate expression of love and of worship to God. Our incarnational faith is all about the bringing together of the spiritual and the material. So it is that Mothering Sunday, the tradition developed of visiting the Mother Church, because it is, of course, from the Mother Church where we receive our salvation, where we were baptised, where we were perhaps received our first Holy Communion, where perhaps we were confirmed, perhaps where we were married. I know these days, of course, people get married everywhere and anywhere. But in times past, people were baptised, made their first Holy Communion, generally were confirmed, and often were married in their home parish. That's why, still to this day, the bands of marriage, when they are called, wherever uh, the bride and groom are getting married, always the parish church will be informed. And you used to hear that wonderful phrase, blah, 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 spinster of this parish, and blah, 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 so and so forth. And then, if anyone knows any just impediment or reason why these two persons may not be joined together in holy matrimony, they are to declare it now. But that's why that used to happen. Because the parish church, because our churches were a representation of our home, our heavenly home as citizens of heaven. Remember that that is the significance of our baptism. We become no longer of this world. We are in it, but we are no longer of it. Remember the words from the prologue of uh, St John's Gospel that we generally hear uh, as the last Gospel at the end of Mass. But all those who did welcome him, he empowered to become the children of God, all those who believe in his name. Their birth came not from human stock, not from nature's will or man's, but from God. Again, this is what St Paul is referring to when he talks about us as being the children of the promise. But also, too, this is what um, baptism signifies in our becoming citizens of heaven. That we are no longer just uh, 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 flesh and blood, but that we are born again. 
We receive, as it were, a heavenly nativity. We receive um, a new life in Christ. Remember, as St. Paul says, we died to the old self and we arose anew in Christ through the waters of baptism. And so, too, we are being reminded by Holy Mother Church that this life is a very much a pilgrimage. We are, in fact, in exile. Our churches, chapels and cathedrals are points at which we can, uh, as it were, touch base. But we are essentially a pilgrim people. And we are fed, of course, then, by a manna, just as the pilgrim people of Israel in the wilderness were fed a heavenly manner, so too are we with the Holy Eucharist. But again, ours is more than just bread. Ours is the body, blood, soul and divinity of Christ. Ours is the very presence of the living God. Ours is a heavenly and spiritual food as well as a physical and tangible food. It is an incarnational food. And the point is, too, that it doesn't just, and it doesn't very much, uh, give us nourishment for our physical bodies, but it feeds our souls. More than that, it unites us with God. So holy is the Eucharist that it is able, briefly, to unite us with God. Even though we be here on earth, even though we be sinners. This is why Holy Mother Church for centuries has been so concerned to make sure that we are approach the Holy Eucharist properly prepared and disposed. That we are like that first incarnational tabernacle made full of grace. We cannot, of course, forget our Lady, the Blessed Mother of God, she who was herself a living tabernacle, a dwelling place of the Most High God. But which glory, which favour, which grace we are enabled to share, though only briefly, though only momentarily, in that receipt of the Holy Communion. But the point is that that then should change us. Two weeks ago we had the Gospel of the Transfiguration, again reminding us of the prospect of Easter, but also too reminding us of the purpose of Lent, of our discipline, of our observance, of our striving to be changed and transformed into saints, to be made holy. Likewise, Holy Church today is reminding us that in those moments of Holy Communion we ourselves become part of the kingdom of God, literally. The citizenship, our citizenship, of the heavenly Jerusalem is momentarily experienced, tangibly real. We are made one with God in the Holy Communion. But it should change us. It should transform us. It feeds us, not just to sustain us, but to transform us. the present time, with COVID-19 and the coronavirus, and already, of course, it being Lent, things have been tough, tougher than usual, perhaps, for Lent. Not only have we had uh, the burden, as it were, though it shouldn't be, remember, a burden to offer our sacrifices uh, to God during this season, but difficult and arduous as Lent can sometimes be, and a pressure indeed on our souls and on our consciences and on our hearts. This year we are contending too with the contagion. Many of us perhaps are filled with anxiety. Certainly some are, are filled with dread, with fear. This Sunday then could not come at a better time. Particularly here 
in uh, the UK, where we are about to uh, uh, where we are about to reach that stage that other countries in the world have already uh, uh, passed through. We have yet to go through the worst time. But as Christians, as Christians we should remember that we have ourselves nothing to be fearful of. What is there to be fearful of for us as Christians? We who are citizens of heaven. We who are citizens of the kingdom of God. We whose eternal life is promised and assured us as long as we remain faithful, as long as we keep God's commandments, as long as we avail ourselves and leave ourselves open to receive God's grace, transformative grace, enabling us and strengthening our own efforts to become righteous, to become holy, to become fit and worthy citizens of heaven. We have the prospect of the heavenly Jerusalem, of the high banquet of the Lamb, of seeing Jesus, of being reunited with all the saints throughout history. I can't wait to get to heaven. Imagine the conversations you could have with, uh, with, with everyone, with everyone that went before us. I'd love to meet St Ambrose. Indeed, I would love to hear St St. John Chrysostom and St. Augustine and St. Jerome, my own namesake, and those other wonderful doctors of the church discussing uh, uh, the, the wonder of our faith together. That would be amazing, incredible. So too would it be nice to meet again and be reunited with. It would be wonderful to reunite with them. It would be amazing to meet all those relatives that you always heard about but never saw because they'd all passed away before you, know, before you were born. Um, and, to, and, and all your family. I mean, how much then would we realise how connected we are as humanity? Imagine meeting Adam and Eve. And of course that's the point, you see, that's, that's part of the thing about our incarnational faith. Is that we as Christians, we understand that we are all connected. This is the thing that coronavirus has um, highlighted and somehow kind of surprised people with. It's just how close we all are. But what we mustn't allow as Christians is what is now a temporary measure of distancing, social distancing, to become a way of life. By which I mean, of course, as long as it is necessary to uh, uh, flatten the curve of the contagion, yes, of course, we must observe uh, the protocols for social distancing, etc. All of that is good, it's meant, it's proper, it's right. And we as Christians, you know, if you, if you love your neighbour, uh, this is a way in which you manifest that. But now, of course, they're talking, you know, originally three months, now even possibly 12 months of having to practice this social distancing. But we must ensure as Christians that this social distancing, like so many other things, doesn't become de rigueur. We must make the point that it is an exception. It is an exception as a token of sacrifice in love for neighbour. But it is not something that is meant forever. And it is not as humanity uh, should ordinarily uh, in, interact with each other. Remember Genesis. It is not good for man to be alone. Remember the witness of the Christians in the uh, Acts of the Apostles uh, in the first century how they came together daily for the Eucharist for worship to break bread with each other to share a meal 
and to look out for each other. Now, of course, observing the protocols of social distancing at the present time, uh, we cannot come together as we used to. But social distancing only means to keep two metres distance from each other. It doesn't mean to avoid each other completely. It doesn't mean to hold oneself up unless a lockdown has been ordered. It doesn't mean to hold oneself away completely from the rest of society. We have to use our prudence. We have to use our judgment. We have to try and protect ourselves and others. But it doesn't mean that we should um, close ourselves off from others. You know, in many ways, the devil couldn't have come up with a better uh, disease. And of course, he didn't, by the way. I don't think for a minute that I'm trying to suggest that the devil did. He didn't. Evil certainly conceived this disease. We forget sometimes how much of our contemporary science is derived not from the benign pursuit of uh, uh, the common good, but often today as a result of um, experiments uh, and uh, explorations, uh, evil explorations in science uh, that, whose original intentions were the death and destruction of others. forget sometimes that a lot of our contemporary science was conceived and developed from the evil uh, experiments of the Nazis for the war efforts on both, on all sides. Can good come from evil? God's honest truth? No. Many of the diseases that have affected our world in the last 20 years have been as a direct result from scientists meddling. Don't get me wrong, there is much good that science could do, but often so much of it is geared to an evil end. We reflected on the nature of evil yesterday. Evil, of course, means the opposite of good. Evil means selfishness. Evil means pride. So often, much of our science has been driven by selfish ends. And for that reason, it is evil. But not all science. As with anything, it depends how a thing is used. It depends how we use our knowledge, how we apply our knowledge. Just in the same way that sin is conceived within our minds first, before it is enacted. There is a split-second decision made by us whether or not to enact that sin or forget it. Whether to choose self or sacrifice. For the sake of heaven, we, my brothers and sisters, should be choosing always sacrifice. By our very nature, as the Apostle says elsewhere, being temples of the Holy Spirit. By our frequent receipt of the Holy Communion, tabernacles, dwelling places of the Most High God, sacrifice automatically then should be a, an aspect of our existence, of our nature, of our understanding ourselves. Because the manifestation of love that is worthy of God is only sacrificial. This is why the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, united as it is with Christ's ultimate sacrifice of himself upon the cross at Calvary, is the supreme, uh, supreme 
and sublime offer of worship we can give to God. And notice that we don't make it ourselves. We make it in union with Christ. We offer it in union with him. It is he who is our high priest. We began the Mass with an invocation to rejoice. And as difficult as the present time is, let us, my brothers and sisters, as good Christians, hold fast to our Christian hope. Let us remember that our ultimate destination is not on earth, but is in heaven. Let us remember that by virtue of our baptism we have already been made citizens of that heavenly kingdom. Remember what our Lord said himself, the kingdom of God is neither here nor there, it is within you. And thus we are called, my brothers and sisters, to be signs, yes, of contradiction to the current world, but also to be ourselves signs and pointers of hope and the means of hope. of the kingdom of God, of the heavenly Jerusalem, of salvation, of redemption, of God's love. Let us then, my brothers and sisters, rejoice, be thinking ourselves to be a part of that heavenly Jerusalem. And let us endeavour to share that hope and that knowledge and that joy and that love with others, particularly in these difficult times. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Corredo in unum Deum, Patrem Omnipotentem, Facorum Celi et Tere, Visibilium Onum et Invisibilium, et in unum Dominum, Iesum Christum Filium Dei Unigenitum, et ex Patrin Antum Ante Omnia Secula, Deum de Deum, Lumen de Lumine, Deum Verum de Deum Vero, Genitum non factum consustantianem Patri, Pequem Omnia Factus Sunt, Qui propter nos homines et propter nostrum salutem descendit de celis, et incarnatus est de Spiritus Sancto ex Maria Virgine, et homum factus est. Crucifixus et siam pronomis su Pontio Pilato passus et sepultus est, et resurrexit ersia die secundum scripturas, et descendit in celum, sede de dexteram patris, Et in heaven venturus est con gloria unitari vivos et mortuos, cuius reni non ene finis. Et in spiritum sanctum dominum et vivificantem, qui ex patri procedi, qui con patri et filius simul adoratori con glorificatur, qui nuputus est per profetas. Et unam sanctam catolicam et apostolicam ecclesiam, confiti ob unum baptisma in missionem pedatorum, et ex spectro resurrectionem mortuorum, et vitam venturi seculi. Amen. Nominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, ornebus. Laudate Dominum, qui ab ininus est, salite nomine eius, quoniam suavis est, omnia que cumque voluit fecit in cielo, et in terra.
Dominus Vobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, sosum corda, habemus et Dominum, gracias a Damus, Domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum est, vere dignum et justum est, et come salutare nos divisebre dubique, et gracias agere, Domine Sancte Pater, onnipotens et tene Deus. Qui comunigenito Filio tuo, e Spiritu Santo, unis est Deus, unis est Dominus, non in su unis, non in unis in laritati persona, e sed in unis trinitanti substantia, qual denim de tua gloria de velanti de credimus, hoc de Filio tuo, hoc de Spiritu Santo, sine deferenzi e descrezioni sentimus, ut che vese confessione vera e sempre tenequa e de aetatis, e di persone spofretas, e di nesensia unitas, e di me stati da retro qualitas. Quam laudet angeli atque ac angeli terve in quoque ex herve, in cui non cessa clamare quotidie, una voce dicentes, Sanctus, 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 Domus Deus Samiot, Plenus Uccelli et Terra Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus quei venti nomine Domini, Hosanna in Excelsis.
ਤੋਂ ਅੱਗੇ ਤੱਕ ਦੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ Ya se cura se culorum. Amen. Ordemus proleger di salutaribus moniti de vine seduzione formati. Adeus dicere. Pater noster qui es in cielis sanctificetum nomen tuum. Ad venia de regnum tuum fie voluntas tua. Sicut in cielo et in terra. Pane nostrum quotidianum de nobis hodie. Dimita in nomis debita nostra. Signa nostri mitimus debitoribus nostris. Et ne los inducas in tentazione. Se Dio la nostra mano. Per la mia sicura sicura Amen. Ex Domini sit semper obiscum. Et cum spirito tuo. Ece agnus Dei, ece qui tolit peccato mundi. Domine, non sum dignus ut intre sub tectum meum, sed hantum dic verbo et sed navitur anima mea. Domine, non sum dignus ut intre sub tectum meum, sed hantum dic verbo et sed navitur anima mea. 
Domine, non su dignus, ut intre septetum meum, sent antum dignemo, et sent navitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online, on an able therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Amen. Eus in 
We look at any machine there on the tribus, tribus domini, and cogitendum domini tuo domini. Dominus Obiscum, et cum spirito tuo. Ordemus. Dominus Ex Blemur, sin genis tractemus ob sequis et fideis sempre mente sumamus. Per Domino nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium tuum, qui tecum virta regna adun in etati suicus sancti Deus, per nomia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus. Munde demonia nos Christus Domini divini sacramenti munus oblatum, et in decedente beate Virgine de Genetrice Maria, cum beato Iosef, beatis apostolis tuis Petru et Paolo, et quae beatis put mani tuim fili et omnibus sanctis, a cum dis nos redder per fessas isibus ex beatos, et per fessas isibus ex benditos. Purifice nos Christus omnipotente misericors Deus, sacramenta quae sumsimus, et in decedenti bus omnibus sanctis tuis presta, Ut hoc tuum sacramentum non sin nobis aiatus ad veniam, del intercessio salutaris ad veniam, sit ab lucio scilerum, sit fortituda fragilium, sit contra omnia mundi pericula firmamentum, sit vivorum aque mortuorum fidelium remissio omnium directorum. Per Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium tuum, qui tecum vivida enia ad unenità di solitus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus suo viscum, et cum spirito tuo. Benedicamus Domino, Deo gratias. De nomen Domine benedictum, et sonum producto in se, collaudo d'orum nostrum, in nomen Domini, ut veci in cerum et terram, dedicat vos omnipotentem. Ater et filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum, et cum Spiritum Tuo, initium Sancti Evangelii, secundum Iovannem, Gloria Tibi Domine. In principio, et verum, et apudeum, et Deus, et verum, hoc erat in principio, apudeum, omnium ipsum factus, et sin ipsum factum, et nihil pro factum est. Et ipso vita erat, et vita erat, lux homini mulus in tenebris luce, et tenebris em non comprehenderum. Fuit homo missus et ergo in omen araci vanes. Ic verit in testimonium, ut testimonium verit in lumen, et omnes credent illum. Non erit ire in lux, et ut testimonium verit in lumen. Erat lux vera, quae lumen, et omnem homine venientem in hoc mundum. In mundum erat, in mundus primsum factus est, in mundus in eum non coniobi. In propria venit et sur eum non eceperum. Quod quod autem in Gepenum terum, deis est molestatum filios dei fieri, chi is qui crente nomine eus, qui non est sanguinibus, nex volontati canis, nex volontati vili, sed ex Deo nati sunt. Et verum carro factum eus, et habitavit in nomis et vilimus gloriam eus, gloriam quasi unigenite a patria, et quanum gratia et veritatis. Deo gratia. God save Elizabeth, our Queen, and graciously hear us when we call upon thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, upon whom thy mercy has laid the government of this kingdom. May she be given so great a measure of every virtue. Thus worthily adorned, may she turn aside from all wickedness, may she overcome her enemies, and with her consort and the royal family, may she come at last in grace to thee, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. 